you know that IVIG is the drug of choice. The dose is 2 gram per kg and it is given as an infusion to be completed over 10 to 12 hours. So appropriately, the child was managed. Question number one goes something like this. A two-year-old child was clinically diagnosed as Kawasaki disease. So they have already given you diagnosis and he was started on IVIG infusion, which was given in a dose of 2 gram per kg and completed over 10 hours. You know that IVIG is the drug of choice. The dose is 2 gram per kg and it is given as an infusion to be completed over 10 to 12 hours. So appropriately, the child was managed. He was also given aspirin in a dose of 80 mg per kg per day in four divided doses, which is again optimum. More than 48 hours later, the child continues to have high-grade fever. Which among the following is true regarding this child? Before we have a look at the option, we have a Kawasaki disease patient who has optimally been managed with IVIG and aspirin, but the fever is still persisting. We know that whenever IVIG infusion is completed and even after completion of infusion, the child continues to have fever more than 36 hours. After the completion of infusion, we say it is IVIG resistant variety of Kawasaki disease. So, persistence or recurrence of fever equal to or more than 36 hours after IVIG infusion has been completed. So, they are basically asking about IVIG resistant KD. So, let us have a look at the options. First is repeat dose of IVIG will be needed followed by steroids. Second option is double dose of IVIG and aspirin are indicated. Third is cyclophosphamide is the next line of management and fourth is risk of coronary artery aneurysm is decreased by IVIG even if fever persists. L let us come back to these options again and try to discuss some of the key points related to IVIG resistant KD. So whenever you have a patient of, I am only summarizing, I am not going into details. Whenever you have a patient of Kawasaki disease, the guidelines say that you will be giving the first line therapy will always be, drug of choice will be obviously IVIG. It will be given in a dose of 2 gram per kg as an infusion, as IV infusion, right? Plus, you will start the patient on aspirin. Aspirin will be given. High dose aspirin is usually used in a dose of 80 to 90, 80 to 100 mg per kg per day in 4 divided doses, right? Now, about 85% patients usually respond to this management. Correct? But according to Nelson, 15% do not respond to this therapy. This percentage is 15% according to the Western textbooks. If you look at the IAP, Indian Academy of Pediatric Consensus Statement on Management of Kawasaki Disease, they give a value between 10 to 20% do not respond. So it is the same, 10 to 20 middle value is 15% only. So these patients who are 15% who are not responding, they are labeled as IVIG resistant Kawasaki disease. When you say our IVIG resistant Kawasaki disease, there is a proper definition to that, right? You should suspect IVIG resistant KD in these patients. What is IVIG resistant KD? When fever persists. So there are two words here, persists or recurs. At least 36 hours after IVIG infusion in appropriate dose has been completed, right? These are the patients, they are called as IVIG resistant KD and what are the problems in these patients? They have a high risk of developing coronary artery aneurysms and uh, appropriate management has not been defined for these patients. But usually the medication, the, the management that we do clinically, the management which is mentioned in the IAP consensus statement and management mentioned in Nelson are virtually the same. So what exactly is the management that you are going to remember for IVIG resistant KD? So whenever you have IVIG resistant KD, the first line therapy will be, first line thing will be repeat. First line therapy for IVIG resistant KD, please remember that. You will repeat the dose of IVIG, right? up to 45 to 50 percent can still have a failure to this regime as well. But repeating a dose of IVIG will be needed. It will take only about 10 to 12 hours. And then still if the fever is persisting, you will go in for giving a trial of short course of corticosteroids. Many times clinically what we do is we start with IVIG 
and by the time uh, six hours to eight hours have crossed and IVG is still going, we give the first dose of corticosteroid. This is what is practically done. Although there are no guidelines what when exactly you should be starting, but it is a common sense rule that you are giving prednisolone and uh, prednisolone is if you are giving orally, it is going to take some time to act, right? It, so infusion, once you start it, uh, you start with short course of steroids immediately afterwards because there is a risk of aneurysm in these patients. And short course of steroids again is not well defined, but usually about 5 to 7 days of steroids will be given. In case you find that there is no response or the patient is deteriorating or any echocardiographic changes are considering, you will try to go in for the next line management. The alternative therapy to this first line therapy, the second line therapy after this will be use of TNF alpha inhibitors. So TNF alpha inhibitors, the one which has been extensively studied and the one which is used actually is infliximab. And in case there is no response to infliximab also, you can give a trial of cyclosporin in these patients. The guidelines of IAP as well as uh, most of the current review articles as well as American Heart Association very clearly say cyclophosphamide has not been found to be effective in Kawasaki disease, IVIG resistant patients. So cyclophosphamide has no role in the management. Off-label patients very severe, not responding to any of them. You can give a trial of plasma phoresis. You can go in for a you know trial basis of other immunosuppressive agents. But this is the sequence that you are supposed to follow when you manage a patient of IVIG resistant KD. Please remember that if fever improves, if Kawasaki disease activity comes down, the risk of aneurysm comes down. If fever persists, it means the disease is active and whether you have given IVIG or not, it will not matter. The patient will be at risk of coronary artery aneurysm till the time fever inflammation will continue to happen in the patient, right? So after this extensive, not extensive, it is actually brief discussion, but extensive according to uh, uh, MCQ explanation, let us go back to the question now. And question says, uh, these are the four options. So let us have a look at the answer. Answer to this question is repeating the dose of IVIG followed by steroids will be needed. So answer is A. Why B option is wrong? Double dose is not going to help much. Doubling the dose of IVIG and aspirin is wrong. Aspirin, already we are giving high dose aspirin. It is not going to make, an, make much of a thing. Uh, cyclophosphamide is the next line of management. I have told you cyclophosphamide is not effective. And risk of coronary aneurysm is decreased by IVIG even if you are persist. That is wrong. Fever, inflammation, if it is persisting, the risk of aneurysm will still be. Right? So answer to this question is A.